So the countdown has begun and I mean basically run up to it. Everybody says it's already scored a century at the box office. Yeah, I think it's because of the immense popularity that uh, MSD has and uh, also uh, the way uh, we have shown the story in the trailer. Uh, so yeah, credit goes to MS and uh, Neeraj Pandey. But you are the real Dhoni, so what was it like slipping into his illustrious shoes? Just to understand him, how he, what he thinks of himself and how he operates. That was the most important thing. And uh, uh, very fortunately, I had the opportunity of talking to him uh, again and again whenever he was free during those 12 months of prep. And uh, so understanding him, I was asking many questions and he was replying honestly and uh, genuinely. Uh, and then after a point you get to know uh, about uh, the thinking pattern. Also, I think if you just go by the, by the script, uh, and if it's a well-made script, mm. uh, then uh, you understand the intent of the story and the character too, and all the scenes. Uh, so it's, it's very hard for you to go wrong as an actor. If you just go by the script and you're listening while you're shooting for the film, you're 80-90% there. Uh, but here, there was just one difference that people already have, few uh, references, visual reference of mm -hmm. him, also the way he speaks and all. So yeah, so the, the method was to just listen to him and just observe him to a point that I start doing things like him <laughs> without thinking. True. So yeah, so these things. No, you have, you have like emulated him really well, but the technique, you seem to have got that right too, and that every cricket fan is going to have a microscope, you know, magnifying glass and look at it. And at the moment with all those trailers, nobody can doubt you. They're saying he's mastered the technique also, the famous helicopter shot. Was that tough? Yeah, that was. The most important thing was need to be not, the idea was not to, I was not thinking about the audience that, okay, let me, let me get this shot right because uh, the audience will feel that I'm MS Dhoni. The thing was in my head, I need to convince myself that I'm the captain of Indian cricket team. So I need to have that, those skills. Maybe after 12 months of preparation, mm. I was still not one tenth uh, of his potential. But in my head, I, I, I was him because of all those five, six, four hours every day for 12 months. And uh, also, fortunately, Kiran Mores uh, trained yeah, me. Yeah, true. And uh, so, first three, four months was just to get the basics right, the batting and the wicket keeping. And uh, then there was an analyst on board who would break down MS shots into frames. And we would analyze it, we would fix the bowling machine, and we would hit the same shot for like, God knows, 200 times every day. <laughs> and till the point that visually it started looking like MS's shot. So you and MS, you are basically MS's doppelganger now. And both of us, can we have you both in the same frame and wonder who's who? Probably. <laughs> that's the intent. <laughs> and also, as Sachin Tendulkar apparently uh, was quite impressed with you and I didn't know that you were an actor and actually thought you were a cricketer, like, you know, playing at the Nets. Is that true? Yeah, Kiran Morris told me because uh, in between the breaks that we took between uh, batting sessions, um, Sachin was here, was there uh, because I think Arjun was playing in the next pitch and uh, so Sachin and Kiran More had this conversation between them and Kiran More walked up to me with a smile and he said that you know what he was asking I was like what and which team do you play for awesome <laughs> and I said he's an actor <laughs> playing MS Dhoni so yeah and also like some of his former teammates like Gautam Gambhir said that biopic on a cricketer should not be made and he's still an active you know, I mean, it's not like he's retired, he's still playing. Well, what's your take on it? Uh, there's a famous saying that uh, it goes by like, uh, there are only three things in the world. Atoms, space between atoms, and opinions. <laughs> so nobody's right, nobody's wrong. Sure. Uh, we don't make stories on uh, profession. We make stories on uh, if there is something that I feel uh, I need to say. Mm. And that's personal. And also, he's still actively playing. You know, usually biopics are made after the person has hung up his boots. I think yeah, I can, I, can, I can make a story on somebody who doesn't do anything. <laughs> no, if, there is, if there is a story, if there is a story, if I have some, uh, because we look at the same thing from different uh, places and we have different stories. Uh, it depends on our perception. Sure. So, yeah. So. so, I mean, basically coming back to MSD, I mean, this story was to be told, I mean, 
I mean, it's an ordinary man who's extraordinary. I mean, achieved the extraordinary from a small town to cricket's international hall of fame. So, I mean, what is it about this movie? Because he said it does not glorify me, but in a biopic, you do end up glorifying the person. It's not glorifying, but if you if you reverse engineer it, I mean, like he's he's now so famous and such a brilliant cricketer. His uh, one is laurels and all, hmm. coming from Rachi, which. Uh, I think 90% of the people didn't know where is it. They used to think it's Karachi. <laughs> okay. um, but uh, so yeah, so when you look back, you can make a sense of it. Mm -hmm. And you can understand that there are a few things that work from this context when, you, when, when, when we say that, okay, recognition and uh, um, earning capability, these are parameters uh, that will tell you that you're successful. Mm. And uh, so yeah, so these things, from that context, you can make sense. Uh, because uh, he believed in something and uh, there was no debate in his head and at the same time uh, so he left that belief and he completely 100% he came back in in present uh, normally we have a tendency of thinking oh this doesn't work out I'll do that so we are constantly between future and and the past not actually uh, looking at and listening to what's happening in the present. Sure. But if you like something, doing something, and uh, if, if that excitement is there, then you forget who you are. Absolutely. And you are there in the present. And you keep on doing it, over a period of time you become so good that you become him. <laughs> so you actually, uh, you reach that goal that you initially you thought of. Absolutely. And how honest is the story? Because sometimes, you know, we tamper the narrative for the screen. And was he comfortable sharing intimate details of his life? Because yes. he's a very private person. Now, once he understood that and he said yes to his, uh, the story, I mean, like, uh, yes to uh, the idea of making a film on him, uh, there was no second thought. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, he understood that he needed to open up in front of Neeraj and me. And uh, so we met separately me and Neeraj, and we asked him so, too many questions. And yeah, he answered them very, very genuinely, as I said, and um, patiently. And also he's such a private person, like even like sometimes they say his family doesn't know post-match where he heads, so he take, goes off on his bike and into his own. So, but when about his past, whether it was his past relationship and the struggles and also he was absolutely comfortable or did he, yes. did he want something? I mean, like he, uh, he, or he, he was uncomfortable, not because he didn't want to reveal, but uh, probably because he didn't want to talk about himself. Uh -huh. You know, you get awkward because you're trying to make sense of everything and uh, if you don't take yourself seriously, and then it gets very difficult to talk about yourself again and again. And so on, from that point of view, he was slightly uh, not comfortable, but he, it was not like that he doesn't want to reveal something and that's why he's fidgety. So what was the toughest part of this biopic for you? as an actor, because you got the technique right, you got his mind right, but what was the toughest part when you were actually shooting on? I can't, I can't see anything. There was nothing that, that was tough because uh, it was not to prove a point to anybody. Mm. Uh, it was just excitement of getting to know this man. And uh, there was a very, very interesting story. And uh, when you know that your director has a very, very, um, personal way of storytelling that's very engaging and he knows uh, what he's doing then you can take that leap of faith and you're just exploring and and and, and trying different things and different takes and mm -hmm. sometimes you get get it right sometimes you don't but then there was nothing as if like oh this is so difficult and I think I wouldn't uh, pull it off and people would think mm -hmm. that okay I'm not so good so there was never ever this thought and three hours, 20 minutes long, it's like watching a 2020 of so, 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 pandra, pandra. so do you think, I mean, naturally the movie is going to hold. Have you used real footage also or is it just you? Yeah, I mean like international matches, they are real footage. Um, but uh, it's a mix of, I mean like it's the, the real footage plus the body is replaced where uh -huh. I'm playing the shot. So it's him who's playing it, it's not MSD. And, and the close-ups when it's his body and my face. But when you see the shots being played, it's the entire body that's replaced.